And now U.S. analysts expect the Republicans to retake the U.S. Uh, Congress and narrow the Democrats' margin in the Senate, delivering a rebuke, as it seemed, to President Barack Obama's party in a campaign that's been shaped by voter anxiety over jobs and the state of the economy. Joining us now on the significance of the U.S. midterm elections is a familiar face on American politics on CNBC is Jay Brooks Spector. Brooks, thanks so much for coming through. Just for all of us across the world, just explain to us the importance of the midterm elections and why these ones are a tipping point for the Obama administration. Well, what's, what's happened is that this election, even though Barack Obama is not running this year, it's, he's only been to his, his term of office for the first two years of it, it's become in effect a referendum on the policies that he proposed the ones he was able to uh, get passed. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, people are judging the success of the current administration or the lack of it and taking it out on incumbents, most of whom happen to be Democratic. Right. Uh, and as a result, Republicans have a chance to come into office, but it may be something of a poison chalice for them as well. I mean, what are the issues that they're going to consider? Because if it's a referendum, we're told that Barack Obama had a breakthrough in terms of health care reform legislation, but voters are not really looking at those issues. It's the economy foremost in their minds. Well, if you think back to two years ago, you'll remember that he was effectively running on an end to the war in Iraq. He was running on what he referred to as change you can believe in, uh, financial reform, uh, health care reform, uh, climate uh, change legislation. And at the beginning of his campaign, those were really important issues. But by the time the election took place, of course, it became the economy because of the, uh, the, the near collapse of, of, the, uh, of, of the economy. And as a result, over the last two years, people have begun to measure his success or failure right. on the basis of whether the economy turns right. around, whether jobs become available. I mean, uh, independent polls suggest that about 70% of Americans will vote Republican, only 19% will vote Democrat. I mean, we'll see the figures as they come out within the next 24, 48 hour, hours. But the point is, it reflects a sentiment that is contrarian to the Democrat and, and their ethos and ideals at this moment. Well, somewhere about April or May, you noticed a change in the rhetoric that uh, President Obama was using. Suddenly the words unemployment, suddenly the word jobs, they all began to, if paragraphs would start with those words because it became clear that all the things that he thought he was going to deliver and in large measure managed to were not issues that people were particularly concerned about. If you look at the polling data, somewhere around 40% of the people of the United States are now anxious about whether they can keep their house or make their mortgage or rental payment. Mm -hmm. In that kind of climate, people are going to vote once again for change, but it's a change that, that has a subtext of right. anger and resentment. Just technically, what, what does it mean when people say the Republicans may take the Congress uh, and could take the Senate, but most likely not to. Yeah. Well, let's break it down. The U.S. The U.S. Parliament, the uh, the Congress, has two houses: the House of Representatives, which is 435 members, and all of them are elected every two years. And up until ne up until today, certainly, the Democrats uh, have had a sizable majority, just enough uh, to try to get most legislation passed. What's going to happen if the polls are right and if the predictions are accurate? the Republicans are going to end up with somewhere in the neighborhood of a 30 to 35 seat majority in the House of Representatives. They get to organize that particular chamber and they get to determine whether or not legislation is considered and passed. The Senate, which, is, uh, which has six year terms and there are two senators for each state, big or small, mm -hmm. is actually elected one third every two years. Mm -hmm. So in effect it represents today's opinion, two years ago's opinion, and four years ago's opinion right. at the same time. And so if there are 36 members in this case uh, of the Senate up for, up for re-election or replacement, uh, the Democrats may just manage to hold on to about 51 of these seats. That means they can organize the Senate, but to pass anything uh, because Democrats sometimes right. defect from a particular piece of legislation, it's going to mean they're going to have to hold right. all those members and probably get a couple of Republicans. Well, if they lose significant membership within the Senate and also within the Congress, many experts are saying Barack Obama has only himself 
to blame for this. They say that when he came to office two years ago, he was so overly confident that it uh, compromised bipartisanship and partnership. He was not willing uh, to engage the Republicans on a variety of uh, legislative uh, measures that he was going to take. He, he, cooperation wasn't in his vocabulary. And now that things are changing, uh, it's going to create a very difficult governance dynamic going forward. Well, actually, it's going to create two options. Uh, the Jimmy Carter option and the Harry Truman option. Uh, sorry, not Jimmy Carter, excuse me, uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton and Harry Truman. Uh, the Clinton uh, option, when, uh, that, when the Democrats lost control of the Congress several years into the Clinton administration, they came up with the phrase triangulation. That is, they would try to pass smaller measures, bite-sized measures, that they could peel off a few disaffected Republicans at a time and gain uh, some sort of success. Smaller successes, but successes. Mm -hmm. The Harry Truman option uh, is effectively when Barack Obama wants to run for re-election in 2012, uh, is to demonize the Republicans. That's the reason why this measure isn't being passed. That's the reason why that's not happening. It's all the fault of those Republicans. Now, he has a choice. He can do one or the other, or sometimes he can mix them up. Mm -hmm. But he's going to have to decide on a different governing dynamic, and it's very close to what you said, than they had up until now. Well, uh, some would argue that he's opted for the second option to demonize the Republicans, because even recently, or if he's been at pains to say, I inherited a recession. No. I inherited a system no. that broke down. I'm trying to fix a problem created by the Republicans. But there is a sense that the Democrats and indeed Barack Obama promised more to the American people in terms of economic reform than what they were able to realistically deliver. Yeah, actually, if we look back at uh, you know all the rhetoric that we've had when the Obama administration started off, they should have said, you know, this is going to take time. We're not going to fix all the problems within two years. And uh, the sort of, of uh, uh, vibe that we had was, you know, everything will be sorted out within two years, within a short period of time. And if I think of the problems that the American economy faced up to, you know, the recession that we had last year, then, of course, you, you can't solve uh, an over-exuberance that we had for 20 years within one year mm -hmm. or two years. So I think that that was actually a mistake, but politicians, I think, live in the short term mm. and that I think is a problem and uh, if we look at what's going to happen or is likely to, to happen then it's going to even be more difficult to right. solve these problems in the next two years. You wanted to comment on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, look at the stimulus package that was passed before, almost $800 billion. And people, when they hear the number $800 billion, it looks like a fair amount of money. And the, the, the promise was that this would begin to deliver jobs in what were referred to as shovel-ready projects. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, the money that was available for these so-called shovel-ready projects was only one-third of the actual stimulus package. And the jobs for these projects, because they have to get bid on, the contracts have mm -hmm. to be let, subcontractors have to be hired, the jobs are only now starting to appear. Right. And this is Oh, this is five, six months late for that oh, kind of political But some people would argue effect. these are not even quality jobs, Brooks. Uh, a lot of the jobs that we're looking at in terms of positive indicators are temporary jobs. They're not permanent jobs. Well, there's, they're temporary and there's temporary. Um, if you get a construction job rebuilding highways and bridges, there are a lot of highways and there are a lot of bridges to rebuild. And as the economy ticks back up, other kinds of construction contracts in particular begin to, to come along. And so a temporary job converts into a permanent job, perhaps, if the economy recovers. Okay, and finally, there's a fascination right now with the rise of the so-called Tea Party Revolution. From my understanding, it's a political movement, not a party, that's evolved in response to the bailout of banks and the economic measures. People very unhappy with what's taken place and literally just making their voice heard. But many of the so-called Tea Party candidates seem to be in the running for lucrative positions in the Congress and possibly even in the Senate. What is the Tea Party and what's the Tea Party Revolution? Well, the Tea Party Revolution, the Tea Party movement refers back to an event that happened before the American Revolution. And the concept is these people are claiming that the government has gone too far, it is too intrusive, and, and they want them out of their lives. Um, now, bear in mind, however, that the surveys tell you that the Tea Party, people who self identify as Tea Party movement uh, individuals, they're, they're ten they tend to be older, 
they tend to be more male, they tend to be less minority, and on the whole wealthier than the average American. And they are in effect harking back to a version of America which isn't true anymore and probably can't be. That there are about 120, 130 candidates who probably fit the definition of Tea Party movement candidates. Some of them are going to win, some of them are going to lose. And the Republican Party is going to have to deal with the winners. And the question is going to be whether the Republican Party in the next presidential election, for example, wants to be right or successful. Because when you're dragged too far to the right, just as if you're dragged too far to the left, right. you lose the center. If you lose the center, you lose an election. Right.